Hi. Today I want to just mention and talk a little bit about the principles that go or, or that are applied in the gift called the working of miracles. Now in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7 through 11, the Apostle Paul, by inspiration of the Holy Spirit, and therefore by the will of God, by the perfect will of God, revealed to us that there are nine gifts of the Holy Spirit. We call them gifts, but they're also called manifestations of the Holy Spirit. I like to use the word explosions or expressions of the Holy Spirit, supernatural manifestations of the Holy Spirit. And three of them are vocal, three of them are power, three of them are revelation. But in regards to the power gifts, there is a significant difference between the gift of healing or the gifts of healings or the gift of curing other people, remedying sickness and disease, and then also the difference with the working of miracles. There's a significant difference. And as I mentioned here the last couple days, I was sharing how the Lord had woke me up, or actually I had woke up and interrupted the flow of the Holy Spirit in my life. He was speaking to me, and he was instructing me in the working of miracles. And I remembered I interrupted by my own thoughts by saying that, uh, oh, God, you're talking to me. And then secondly, you're talking to me for other people, for me to share it with other people. Now, I mentioned that there were three things that I did perceive. I know that there was a lot that I was not perceiving, was not picking up, and could not remember when I woke up out of that vision or dream that I was having at that time, about 5.30 in the morning. But I immediately did remember to get up and write down what I did remember. And I prayed and I wrote down the three things. I mentioned them yesterday. Number one, the splitting of the atom. How does the atom split in the natural world? We know an, an atom bomb explodes. It's just amazing. A little little bomb can tick tock and then boom, this big bang takes place and time and matter is, is created as a result of it. And uh, secondly was the suspension of time. And thirdly, the law of relativity. Now, I didn't know what these terms these three terms were. I don't know how in the world God could suspend time, but I know he can do that. And I know that he gave people like Joshua the ability to have that miracle work in his life when there was this famous battle and the, the sun was going down and he needed a little bit more daylight for Israel, the nation of Israel, to defeat their enemies that day. So he commanded the sun to stand still. Now, we don't know whether the sun stood still or it was because it's the, the sun doesn't move anyways. We know that. I don't want to get into all this theology, I mean, all this scientific stuff. But we know that to, to man that was living on the earth at that time, it appeared that the sun stood still. And instead of the sun going down that day, God continued the light for that battle until they had a successful battle. We know that there are many miracles that took place. We know that Jesus, for instance, worked a miracle when he changed the water to wine. That was his very first miracle. We're going to talk about that a little bit uh, tomorrow. We also know the prophets like Elijah and Elisha. They all worked miracles. I mean, worked miracles, parting the, the, um, the Jordan River, uh, causing an axe handle to float in the water. I mean, suspending the natural order of events. And so I want to talk a little bit about that, but the th chief thing that got my attention was the law of relativity. And here's what I found about that. The flow of time varies one location to another. In other words, um, and again, you don't, I'm reading this from some uh, manual here, Thank, uh, Thank, thankfully, you don't have to know the full theory behind this law, the law of relativity, to successfully apply it in your life, to apply it in your life, to work it in your own life. And he goes on to say this, the law of relativity tells us that everything in our physical world is only made real by our relationship or comparison it to uh, something. For instance, only light or light only exists because we compare it to darkness. Good only exists because we compare it to bad. Hot only exists because we compare it to cold. Well, the Apostle Paul talked a little bit about that in regards to the law and the law of knowing when he sinned. He said, when I didn't know the law, I didn't know I was sinning. But when I knew the law, all of a sudden sin revived in my heart because I felt guilty because I knew God said it was wrong. You can read some of that in, in Romans chapter 7, 1 Corinthians. Um, 
But the point I want to establish here is that there is something that's relative. For instance, you can go out there. I remember a snowstorm we had out in, in New England when I was home, and it got bitter cold. We lost power in the house, and, uh, and I went out to shovel the driveway. When I came back in, there was no heat in the house, and everybody was cuddled up on, you know, uh, on the sofa with their gloves and their pants and their you know, blankets around there, and they're shivering because it's so cold in there. And I come in, and I take my hat and coat off and shoes off, and I'm sweating. I mean, I don't feel the, the cold whatsoever because I've just come out of another environment that's even colder. So the heat or the condition for me was different than the condition for other people. That's kind of what the law of relativity uh, in, infers. Now, I don't understand this principle too much. I'm just sharing a little bit off my from my heart just to try to take steps forward so that maybe God will say, I've got to help Bill here learn a little bit more. But I do know it applies in the, in the principle of God's working of miracles. And so tomorrow we're going to talk a little bit about the, the working of miracles. God bless you.